Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. I've come up with a message called the oil of gladness, which is also headship. The oil of gladness, which is also what? Headship. You know, when God made man, he put him as head over all creation. He says, rule over the seas, rule over the, um, the, the land, rule over the galaxies. I remember a young man came to see me. He was a member of the church before he traveled. And that's what we're doing. We're preparing you to be head. And I remember he was having a meeting with me and I told him, look, you have to start going. It's about to rain. He said, Pastor, don't worry about the rain. I'll hold it till I get to the house. I said, you don't have any umbrella. He said, I don't need an umbrella. I'll steal the rain. When I get to the house, I will unleash it back. I said, okay. So we finished our meeting. It was dark. It was windy. He got to the house. He called me. He said, I just got to the house. He said, I hope you're indoors because I want to release the rain. I said, I'm indoors. He said, okay, I release it in just two minutes. In one to two minutes, heaven unleashed and poured out. That's what we're talking about. Heads, fathers, men, heads, rulers, exercising dominion, authority. Praise God. Not arguing that, don't you know I'm a man? Once you're saying, don't you know, that, that the headship is not there. It's displayed with demonstrations of authority, which is what we're looking at this morning. But of course, no word of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So it's applicable to the women also, in Hebrews chapter 1, I read from verse 8 to 9. Hebrews chapter 1, I read from verse 8 to 9. But to the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Because you have loved righteousness and hated iniquity, Therefore, God, even your God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above your contemporaries. So there's an oil of gladness that puts you above your contemporaries. When that oil rests on your head, you acquire what they call headship and you begin a rulership. You are head over your contemporaries. It could be in the field of a skill in whatever area it is, but it's a headship anointing. In Genesis 49, Jacob was blessing Joseph from verse 22. And says, I bless you with the dew of heaven, the fatness of the deep. And he began to pronounce blessings. He said, these blessings have separated you from the brethren and therefore made you head over them. So it's a blessing and the anointing of God that rested on Joseph that put him on that throne so that he was above all his brethren. The Bible says, and Jabez called on God, and God answered his prayers, and he did. He was more honorable than his brethren. I'm talking, I'm not talking of contemporaryship, I'm talking of headship above contemporaries. That's what we're looking at this morning. Headship above contemporaries. And that's what God is going to do in your lives this morning. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, an oil of grace, an oil of anointing is going to flow even through these channels. It's going to rest on your head and in areas you have been struggling with, it's going to raise you up above the normal. So it is not a state of normalcy, it's a state above the normal. Praise the Lord. And when this happens, there'll be a Sound of joy, of laughter, of rejoicing. Like it said in Psalm 100 verse 1, it said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. This grace has rest upon you. You're going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Starting from this week in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You're going to go out with joy. Like it said in Isaiah 55, 12. He said, you will be led forth with peace. You will go out with joy. When you go out with joy means you're not going to achieve what you're going to achieve that day in your normal capacity or your normal strength. There's going to be an addition from God. There's going to be an extra grace from the throne of God that will put you on a higher scale 
and give you more than it's required or you need or you can achieve by your natural strength. So today and this week, you're going out with joy in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In Psalm 30 verse 5, it says, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. That joy is still the oil of gladness. It's called brightness. It's called laughter. It's called to rejoice, to celebrate. It, it, it means to jump, to be excited, to be lifted up. It says joy will come in the morning. And I prophesy to those of you whose hour has been dark, whose time has been full of darkness, who have been going through struggling in life. You know, there are things that God can do in your life. It could be a word. It could be a direction. It could be an instruction. But it will take you out of that channel and bring you into a state of where you will laugh, you will rejoice, and things will work for you. And I declare your morning has come. Your hour of the night is spent. Your morning has come. Your joy has come. And let it come into your life. Those darkness and those weeping has come to an end in your life. Right now, joy has come into your life in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, it's a word for our fathers and for everyone that it's time to take that headship position. It's time to rise above the normal. And when you look at how things are going on in the world today, it's only the above normal that is actually having a feel in life. Those who are the normal are just what we say existing. There's a difference between existing and living. You know, people can exist and they just live a normal life. God didn't call us to a normal life. He called us and says we are a unique being, peculiar people. That means we're not normal. We're a chosen generation, called of God, raised of God, born of God, to excel and stand out in our generation. And so the message today is taking you out of that realm of normalcy into the realm of that uniqueness where you stand out, you are head, and you reign. You are called to reign. He says he has made us priests and kings unto God. Kings reign. Kings reign. Praise the Lord. So you are going to reign and your rulership is going to begin from today in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Now, um, when we're talking about the oil of joy, we say it's an anointing, it's a grace. It goes further in Psalm 18. I'll just read a few scriptures just to buttress that, that it's an, it's, it's an anointing. In Psalm 18, I'll read verse 43. Psalm 18, I read verse 43. And it says... Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people. You have made me the head of the nations. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. Now, they don't know you, so they have no antecedent to work with for which to submit to you. So why do they submit? When Moses went to Egypt and he went to the elders of Israel, they didn't bow to him. He told them, the Lord sent me. They said, okay, so what do you have to give us? Then he threw his rod down and became a snake. He took water from the mire, pot, it became blood. Oh. Then when he did all that, then the Bible says they bowed to the ground to worship. He said, truly, God has sent a man. But there are people who won't do any sign. They just show up and people bow. Why? There's an anointing radiating from them. That is a grace. It's just emitting all of gladness. And people recognize that and they don't know you and they just submit. Meaning, they acknowledge headship with no prior antecedent of anything to work with. So that is a grace. In Isaiah 61, Jesus preached, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me 
to preach glad tidings to the poor, to bind the brokenhearted. And maybe I should read it so we can see that it's also an anointing. Isaiah chapter 61, I'll read from verse 3. He has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. A, someone mourning can be comforted, but that's not enough. That's not enough. I said some time ago to any woman out there who has ever been raped before, first and foremost, I sympathize with that and I wished it never happened. But unfortunately, many of us in humanity find ourselves in circumstances we never anticipated or bargained for. And J Joseph, for example, never bargained for prison. Even if there was a prison, not from his brothers. But you know what? Those prison years, God wiped it out of his life with a Manasseh blessing. And when Manasseh was born, he said, God has made me to forget all the toil in my father's house. And I said, if you have been raped before, you need to move forward in life. And there are options for you. If you have proof, go to the police and let them prosecute the case. If you don't have proof, commit it to God and hand the person to God to be judged. And I said, if you want comfort only, then take it to social media and people will comfort you. But I love what he said, when you comfort those that mourn, it's not enough. But to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion and give them beauty for ashes. So the social media will comfort you. The judiciary will give you judgment and reprieve. And the offender will be punished. But this anointing will do what? It will wipe out the memory and the effect of the rape by doing what? By giving you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for money. So somebody that is mourning is being comforted from the social media. But God will give him the oil of joy, meaning he will make sure those who are involved in your shame will bow at your being made with double honor. He will make sure they come to your exhortation, to your celebration, and he said, I'll make them of the synagogue of Satan to worship at the soles of your feet. So he's going to wipe out that memory, which no other being can do except God. How? By giving you beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So there is an oil of joy here this morning, and it's already flowing, and it's coming into your life. So it's not just making people head only. It's going to address the grief, the mournings, the pain, the hurt, you have carried in your soul for years. It will be addressed right now. And I release that oil to flow. Even through the camera. And through whatever means you're watching. Let this anointing begin to flow into your life. Let God cause you to laugh again. Let it cause you to rejoice. Let him cause you to dance. And let those who wished you not well who were part of what brought you shame, come and witness your celebration of double honor and God caused them to bow at your feet in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I will look at things God can do in your life that can cause this laughter, this oil of joy, things that can happen in your life that is the joy, is the oil of gladness, and it causes that headship through different means. 
In Joseph's case, the headship came through not just the throne, but also Manasseh. He can't be on that throne. There are people who have been blessed. They've gone through things in life, and they now, they're now blessed, but they still remember the hurt. When Joseph mounted the throne, did he say God has wiped out the hurt? No. What just did was God compensated all his years of struggle. But the hurt of his brothers was wiped out with Manasseh. Um, we see a man like Nelson Mandela. He was 27 years incarceration. But those years of incarceration, four years of presidency. I don't think if you mention Nelson Mandela, people are remembering 27 years. They, oh, they know the former pre the president of Sata. They don't remember. If you say, oh, do you know Nelson Mandela? They just oh. Is it that, that rebel that was jailed for 20 days? Nobody says that again. Oh, the former president of South Africa. When you hear the news, they say, oh, a statue of Nelson Mandela, the former president. They don't say the former rebel. No. That presidency has wiped out the memory of rebels. And that's how God gives the oil of gladness. Praise God. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, King Saul was anointed. When that anointing came upon him, he changed to another being. Even a man who was never in the lineage of the priest or the prophets prophesied. People gave him gifts. He changed. Everything changed. As this oil comes into your life, everything will change in your life. And things will begin to happen that will exalt you, give you headship, and wipe out memories of losses in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's look at some things that can happen when the oil of gladness comes upon you in your life, one or two things that will happen. In John 16, John chapter 16, I read from verse 20. John chapter 16 from verse 20 to 22. Verily, verily, I say unto you that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful. So that's another example of sorrow in the night. But your sorrow shall be turned to joy. 21. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish, for joy that a man is born into the world. So, what is making this woman forget all the labor pain and the pregnancy pain, that beautiful, handsome, beautiful girl, handsome boy she's seen. And that's how God, and the Bible calls it joy. Joy. He said, for joy. He says, our sorrow is turned to joy. That's what the oil of gladness does. Now, it's giving us an example of a pregnant woman who gives birth who went through labor with all the labor pain. Obviously, I guess when this was done, there was nothing called like epidura to, uh, uh, to remove the pain. So there was a lot of pain up to the uh, 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 to number 10 dilation and a lot of pain and she gives birth. He said, but as soon as she sees that handsome boy looking healthy, she doesn't even remember the pain again. Meaning the oil of joy is a finisher's anointing. It will finish Every good project in your life that you have started, none will be truncated, 
None will be aborted. None will be miscarried. Everything will come to a fruitful, a peaceful, and a prosperous completion. And there is no man who has started a building, gone through so many years of challenges, and he's finished that building on the day the house has been dedicated. He's happy. He's rejoicing. He no longer remembers the time he went through pain and struggle, carrying cement. He's forgotten everything. What he's now looking at, he oh, this is the master's bedroom. Oh, that's the jacuzzi. And, you know, what I actually did, because I like this, so I brought this. But before that house came into a reality, he had times when he was broke. He had times when he didn't eat. He had to put money in the house. He went through so much. But when he's inspecting that house, it's now tastefully furnished. It has a swimming pool. He doesn't remember all the pain again. So it's a completion anointing. It's a completion anointing. And I prophesy into your lives, every good project you have begun, I pray by the reason of a release of this finisher's anointing, that project will be completed speedily in the name of Jesus. By the oil of joy, it will be completed such that you will no longer remember the sorrow. Now, if the house is not completed well, maybe he sees a part falling. Ah, and he will say, and I remember when I was doing this part. Oh, if I, I couldn't eat for three days, that's when my car had a slight accident. Look at the thing. He's not happy about it. But if it's completed, he wouldn't even bother about all those things. So whatever project you're going through, it should be completed with no memory of the sorrow or the pain or the anguish you went through in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in Psalm 126, Psalm 126, uh, it's, uh, I'll read the whole of the um, psalm and it says, when the Lord, I'm going to paraphrase the way I read it, changed our situation. It was as if we were in a dream. Our mouth was filled with laughter. We kept laughing. Our tongue, we kept singing. And we kept rejoicing. It was so explicit. And it was so unique and so beautiful. That even people who did not believe in God. Went about saying, wow. Come and see what God has done. I'll put it in my life, Carl Daddy Sugar, and in your life. Then we emphasized it again. The Lord has done great things in our lives whereof we are glad. Change our situation, O oh God, as the streams in the south. We sowed, we gave in tears. So whoever so expects to reap. And we have gone forth weeping, bearing precious seeds. Now we are returning with our harvest. There is no farmer that plants crops and sees a bountiful harvest that is not happy. He will be rejoicing. That is the heart desire. Of the investment meaning by this anointing you will see not just the hard desire of your investment you will see far more than you expect from your investments in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus so it's a finishers anointing in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 9 it says the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this building the hands of Zerubbabel will complete it, not with the shout of hard work, but with the shout of grace. So, grace will come. Philippians 1, 6 says, Faithful is he who has begun a good work in you, who also will complete it. Oh God, I release grace for completion, grace for finishing, grace for complete every good work that has begun in your life. If you are pregnant, you will carry that pregnancy to full term. I release grace. I release life upon you. 
in the name of Jesus. If you have been having miscarriage, it will not happen with this word by the release of the oil of joy. If you have been having projects, contracts, they give to you, they cancel. It's not going to happen by the release of this grace. This will be completed because you will laugh, you will rejoice, and your neighbors will gather to hear how God has blessed you. People will not laugh at you. They will laugh with you. Sarah said, God has made me to laugh. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. In John chapter 3, John the Baptist was nearing the completion of this ministry. And a lot of his followers just abandoned him and followed Jesus. And they told him, John, he whom you testified of, that is the lamb, he's baptizing. And everyone that should come to you, they are going to. He said, is this is my, in this my joy is fulfilled. That is the essence of why I came. I have seen the essence of all my work and it has come out to be profit. You will make profit from your investment in the name of Jesus. COVID will not wipe out your profit. You will make profit from your investments. Your joy will be full. Your joy no one will take from you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe you have been blessed by that message and I know your faith has been built up and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.